Increases in cases, important reminders, and personal responsibility. I'm Brian Moore, and this is Focus NNS. I'm here in my office at Newport News Shipbuilding. We are seeing an increase of COVID-19 cases and we're working to figure out why and what we can do to help control the spread of coronavirus. We'll tell you more about that. Plus, hard at work in the foundry on CVN 80. And one of the most important features on the aircraft carrier, we'll take you aboard JFK to see progress on the beginnings of the catapult systems. Those stories and more are coming up, but first on deck, Newport News Shipbuilding is seeing a rise of COVID-19 cases, especially around Outfitting Berth 1 or OB1. We're trying to figure out exactly why that is, and we're also working very hard to stop it. We've heard it before, wash your hands, wear your masks, and practice social distancing. But with a rise in COVID-19 cases, Newport News Shipbuilding is repeating the message and analyzing positive cases to look for trends. We're seeing clusters of cases within work groups. And those folks share common meeting areas, they share trailers, they share um, some work assignments, but it's more their before shift lunchtime and after shift activities that seem to be what's uh, causing the spread of the virus more than anything else. As a result, the shipyard has reestablished the Crisis Action Group or CAG to further efforts of keeping shipbuilders safe. Deep cleaning continues, communal eating areas are once again being closed, and important information is being distributed for crew talks. But we must also do our part not only at the yard, but at home as well. It's imperative that we continue to be vigilant with this because it's not going away. As we stated, you know, in the beginning, this is going to be with us for uh, months to, until we get a you know, viable vaccine. So it's really, really important to remain vigilant both inside and outside the shipyard. And we are working with the Navy and their medical personnel to keep Navy personnel, shipbuilders, and others who enter the gates safe. So please remember the 411 website, our social media pages, and nns to go for the latest information. Now, let's take a look at some other news from around the yard. It served the yard well, but Newport News Shipbuilding is getting ready to say goodbye to the 310-ton Green Goliath Gantry Crane. Over the next few months, the crane will be lifted up using lift jack towers. Pieces will then be cut off and disassembled, and parts will be shipped out for salvage. The crane has been an integral part of the shipyard since 1970. Its replacement, the new 315-ton Goliath Gantry Crane, is already in service and performing critical lifts for the yard. Its first real test will come as CBN 74 USS John C. Stennis arrives for its refueling and overhaul in early 2021. Newport News shipbuilders step up to help the American Red Cross with much needed blood supplies. This video was shot at one of the blood drives just as the pandemic was beginning and before masks were required. During recent drives, 60 units of blood were collected, which have the potential of helping 180 people in life-threatening situations. The Red Cross says they would not be able to fulfill the mission of assisting people who need help without Newport News Shipbuilding. Keep on the lookout for more drives at the shipyard. The next one is July 8th in Building 520. Newport News Shipbuilding joins proud parents in congratulating high school and college graduates. Shipbuilders sent in photographs of their graduating students for a special showing on NNS social media. In addition, Newport News Shipbuilding President Jennifer Boykin did a video graduation message for several area school districts, including Hampton and Pocosin, as well as the Achievable Dream Academy in Newport News. 
Most high schools and colleges are having to be creative with virtual graduation ceremonies due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And Newport News Shipbuilding congratulates all 2020 graduates. Well, the Foundry team recently completed a 96,000 pound pour to create a part for aircraft carrier Enterprise, CVN-80. This is the first large steel casting for one upper rudder post, which will play a vital role in the carrier steering capabilities. Arlena Wallace tells us more about the double pour. That's right, Brian. I'm here in the Foundry where Carbon steel is in liquid form in these two furnaces here. This will later become a part of CVN-80. It's a critical part of an aircraft carrier. A rudder post helps steer the ship, allowing turns like this to happen. Making part of the rudder post begins with Tony Gravely's team. So it's basically a building process, making parts from scratch. Shipbuilders spend hours mixing materials to achieve perfect chemistry. Stabilize it, make sure the chemistry is right, test it, pour it in the ladles. Tony makes it sound easy. He says a successful pour also takes team chemistry. We have a pretty good camaraderie. It's real tight knit. We have to be able to trust each other and work together. Teamwork. Teamwork is key success to everything that we do. Matt Taylor is the eyes on the ground for the crane operator. It gets real hot and it, 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 a lot of smoke can block his vision. Want we'll to be as safe as possible, make sure the air is clear, make sure your travel path is clear. Maintaining communication is a key goal for us. And so the pour begins. What we're going to do, we're going to use two cranes because, you know, one furnace can't hold enough metal and one ladle can't hold enough metal. So we have two cranes. One crane is going to come tap out with one furnace bring it down the house, and another crane will tap out with the other furnace and go down the house, send them on the transfer cars, transfer them over to another bay where we use, also use two cranes over there. And off they go to the molds, where the liquid carbon steel becomes a solid casting. There are four more parts to complete that rudder post for CVN-80 Enterprise. So the foundry is going to be busy at work completing these pours. For Focus NNS, I'm Lena Wallace. Back to you, Brian. All right. Thank you so much, Lena. And from CVN 80 to CVN 79, where construction continues on the John F. Kennedy. One critical component is the catapult system, and shipbuilders are relying on lessons learned from Gerald R. Ford. Our Aaron Pritchett has more on that story. It's a job that most people don't know about, one that requires teamwork, skill, accuracy, and precise measurements. As a specialized group of shipbuilders come together just after sunset and work into the wee hours of the morning to avoid the heat as they take on the monumental and time-consuming process of laying the foundation on what will become EMALS, or the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch Systems on the second four-class aircraft carrier, John F. Kennedy, CVN-79. Yeah, so we're up here on Cat 2 on CVN 79 and we're doing the uh, dead man setups to uh, build the catapults. Uh, this is waterborne alignment. Um, it's a crucial step to uh, set the footstools and the clevises. That's where the uh, motor modules lock into. Uh, the motor modules set down onto the footstools and then the uh, lateral support beams tie the clevises and the motor modules together. That makes up EMOL. It's the very beginning of it. Um, this is one of the most crucial steps. Um, this sets all your alignment for your slot and your gap. So I mean, without this, you know, you can't keep 360 feet straight. That's why we have to do it at night. You got to have three hours from sunset before you can start taking uh, coefficients and taking uh, temperatures. You know, the catapult's a living, breathing dragon. So you got to do it at night so that way it stays all nice and straight. This is a Faro laser tracker. This is actually one of the newest trackers that we have. Yeah, it has to be accurate. We usually try not to let this instrument move more than five thousandths of an inch while we're surveying. E24 provides us data based on our survey of the empty trough of where to set those permanent monuments on the dead man. We uh, put that ball where it's supposed to be and we try and match it to the number that they give us. And we have 43 move the wrenches and just line that up to where it needs to be. Oh yes, it's very tedious. Um, it's very hands-on, but we got it under control. The dead man, um, it helps balance the clevises on the sides that you can see along the sides. Um, it helps get everything properly aligned. But when we do get the track in place, everything just fits perfect. 
So once we do the initial setup, um, we take all the sizes, send it out to the machine shop to have the clevises cut on board. And then uh, after we're done with that, O68 drops back and they start surveying the rest of the clevises and the foot stools to make sure everything's intolerant. Basically that laser, there's what's called an SMR and it has mirrors in it and it takes the center of that ball, basically triangulates that. So it's the azimuth of the tracker, how it spins, the distance that the laser travels and the, the zenith, the height. So it basically triangulates that point in space where we have the, that ball. Yeah, so this is cat number two. Next we'll go to cat number one and then we should be doing cat three and four at the same time. Uh, it's 29 setups per cat. So it's easily a month per cat just uh, doing the initial setup. So yes, it's, a, it's very hard, but we have a great team to help put it together. You know, I was on the Ford and I worked on the Ford for six and a half years. Um, and took everything that I learned from there as a hourly mechanic and uh, been trying to apply it to the Kennedy. You know, every night still is a challenge. Um, we've run into new issues and uh, you know, from last boat to this boat, it's not identical. Teaching my guys the quicker ways and uh, you know, some of the new ways and technologies that we've learned to do things. So it's definitely made things a little bit quicker and easier. And I mean, it's very important what we do. From all the way down to the engine room to flight deck, everything we do is very crucial for the men and women, the sailors that uh, ride the ship. Still a long way to go, but a process these shipbuilders are committed to, as their critical work helps to set the stage for the exciting dead load testing, which will take place in late 2021. For Focus NNS, I'm Aaron Pritchett. Back to you, Brian. All right, Aaron, it's great to see the progress on the Kennedy. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Focus NNS. Remember, the 411 website for all the latest information on COVID-19 and how we can all do our part to stop the spread. And for the latest shipyard news, check out our weekly publication, Currents, and download our free app, nns to go It's available in the Google and Apple stores on your smartphones and tablets. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Brian Moore.